Hey friends, I'm Mel and welcome to my kitchen. This time of year, my mind goes to desserts. Is there really a bad time for your mind to go to desserts? Probably not, but early May, we have lots of birthdays and anniversaries. I'm starting to think about the summer holidays and picnics to come, but especially this weekend, I'm thinking about Mother's Day. So I have four desserts I'm sharing tonight that happen to be personal favorites of two very special women to me, my mother and mother-in-law. This is kind of like the little game we used to play as kids. One of these things doesn't belong. Can you guess which one it is? <laughs> Actually, maybe two of them look a little weird here, but just trust the process on this old-fashioned apple salad. I have all of my fruit and my veggies washed up, and you just want to try to cut them all up into, I say bite-sized pizzas. You can use whatever kind of apples that you like, but I especially like an apple with a red skin in fruit salad or apple salad because I think that it's really pretty, but you could definitely use green if you wanted to, but I do prefer a sweeter flavor apple in here. But you know, you could mix it up and do a couple red and a couple green. And I'll do my best to give you measurements here but that's always kind of hard for me to do on recipes like this. These are Gala apples that I'm using. I like the flavor of them, and I like the size that they come in. They're a little bit of a smaller apple, perfect for snacking. And I got these in like a three pound bag, so they're about the size apples that you would get when you buy them by the bag. And I would say that's probably about three cups of apples. I've got two ribs of celery, and I'm not a huge fan of celery on its own, like to just eat it. I love it cooked in dishes and soups. And I like it in salads and stuff like this. But when I had asked my mother-in-law, you know, what her favorite dessert was, and she said apple salad, and she began telling me what she put in hers. And then she said, oh yeah, and celery. Lots and lots of celery. You gotta have that crunch. So we're gonna make sure we got lots of celery in here for Miss Wilma. And I have it chopped up or diced up pretty small, but I'm gonna run my knife back through it and just get it a little bit smaller if I can. I put my celery in here, but I feel like we've got more celery than apple. That's how I get in messes when I cook. I just kinda do it by looks. So I'm gonna put at least one more apple in here. You just never know till you get everything in there. So I think that looks good. That's four small gala apples and two ribs of celery. Now it's the pride of the South. Throw in a big spoonful of mayonnaise. That looks like probably half a cup I'm gonna start with. And I like to go ahead and get it mixed in a little bit before I add in the rest of my ingredients. And you definitely don't wanna put too much mayonnaise. You just want enough to coat it. The next thing that we like to put in ours is craisins. If you only have raisins, you can use that, but the craisins make it extra good. Probably half a cup. And the oddball in the bunch is the mini marshmallows. And just throw caution to the wind here and put in how much ever you want. I'm probably gonna do about a cup or so of them. I can remember when me and Patrick first started dating, his mama or his mama, her mother, would always make this at Thanksgiving and Christmas, and I just loved it. I fell in love with it. This was just one of the things that I don't ever remember my mama making. I think we could use a few more marshmallows. My mother-in-law said she loves the marshmallows. You can't leave them out either. While we're at it, we'll just throw a few more of these dried craisins in too. I can't say that this is necessarily a healthy dessert or anything like that. Um, don't be fooled because of the celery and the apples, but I will say it's probably better for you than a Snickers. <laughs> Did you know I have a recipe for a Snickers salad? I've never made it, um, but I look at it often. It's just a big old Snickers salad. I think it has apples in it too. Apples are kind of like cucumbers for us moms. They make us feel better about ourselves. You know, we might do a frozen pizza for dinner, but you cut up that cucumber and put some cut up apple slices on the side, you've served them a square meal, friends. 
And I like to squeeze a little bit of lemon juice on mine. It kind of helps the apples from turning brown and it just, you know, brightens it up too. Let's get some of that lemon juice all over everything down in here. One last little thing that I like to do that's not in the original recipe is to take a little bit of brown sugar and sprinkle that on. It just makes everything a little bit sweeter. And I'm gonna mix that little bit of brown sugar down in here and let it try to get spread off throughout this salad. Before I serve it, I just sprinkle just a little bit more on the top. You guys know something like this is not good till it's set for a little bit, but I can't help myself. I gotta get me a little bit of everything here in a bite. I've got it all here. Let's give it a try. This is so good. This is just like I remember Patrick's mom and his mama all making it all those years. It's not real heavy. It's just so good. Who would think that mayonnaise would go so good with this stuff? But it does. It's delicious. Treat your mama to a big old apple salad for Mother's Day. Before we move on to the next dessert, I wanted to let you know that today's video is part of a Women of Faith collab. It's hosted by my good friend Darlene, and her channel is called Super at 60. Darlene has a wonderful channel. She has a lot of great recipes and cooking inspiration. She does some grocery hauls, and it's just an all-round happy place to visit. It's been my honor to be asked and able to take part in a couple of these Women of Faith collabs that Darlene's hosted. This time, the ladies and I will all be sharing dessert recipes that were our mom's favorites. And hopefully we'll all share a little bit about our moms too. The ladies in this collab are Darlene at Super at 60. We'll have Amy Marion and Leslie, the farming pastor's wife. And me too. <laughs> So if you're coming over from one of the other ladies' channels, welcome and thank you for being here. I hope you have a great time. And for all of my regular viewers, be sure and check my description box. I'll have a link to everything down below. Go and check these ladies out. All other channels are similar to mine in content, maybe a little bit different, but we all have about the same values and vibes. I know you'll enjoy visiting with them too. So thank you, Darlene, for hosting. Thank you, Amy, and thank you, Leslie, for being a part of this and allowing me to be a part of this with you guys. Now let's make some Mountain Dew apples. I'm using one Granny Smith apple. The recipe that I'm gonna pin for you, I'm halfing it because one apple is gonna make eight dumplings. We don't even need eight. We sure don't need 16 of these things laying around here. I have this little dude, you've probably seen this. I think this one came from Pampered Chef, but you just put it over the top and press really hard, really, really hard when it's a fresh apple. And it makes you eight little slices there. So you got your core out. So all I gotta do is come back through and just peel the skin off of them. I'll put one of these in my Amazon store for you so you can kind of see it. Now you want to use a Granny Smith because it's nice and tart. That's just what really tastes good in here. Now, if you didn't have a Granny Smith, I'm sure you could use something else and all this sugar and brown sugar and all this goodness is probably going to make it all just taste fine in the end anyway. Now, I have another recipe I'm going to put up here for you. If you do not have Mountain Dew, you can use orange juice for this. Just a little bit different. You're going to put the orange juice in the sauce and you pour it over all at once. But I have made this before too and it's really good. Okie dokie, I'm using butter flavored crescent rolls. The butter flavored was just what they had, but it's probably going to make it extra good too. Okie doke. I just made my little triangle out here and then I'm taking one little slice of apple and just rolling it up in every one. You'll notice that some of my apples are bigger and some of them's cut smaller. That's because apples are not perfect. <laughs> they are just, um, you know, that core wasn't exactly straight, so some of them are cut a little bit bigger than others, but that's fine because some of us like a little more apple and some of us like a little more dumpling. This is probably a eight by eight pan over here. I just went over it with a little bit of cooking spray and I'm just setting them over into that pan. Now, if you want to get super extra, you could do cinnamon on the inside 
of these crescent rolls. I've done that before, but I'm not gonna get that extra tonight. I'm gonna go over them a couple times with some cinnamon and sugar. But now I'm just gonna take a little bit of cinnamon and I actually have some of my Mr. Sticks cinnamon and sugar mix that you add the butter with. And I am just gonna sprinkle this pretty liberally over the top. Okay, I've got my saucepan here. I'm gonna take an entire stick of butter and I'm gonna take a half a cup of brown sugar and half a cup of regular granulated sugar. We're just gonna stir all this together and let it get all melted and it'll make a nice gooey sauce. And when my sauce gets down here, I like to put just a little bit more cinnamon in my sauce and I want to put just a smidgen of vanilla too. Oh, it's a little hot down there. Okay, now we are just gonna pour this right over these dumplings. Try to get them all covered anywhere you see some that's not covered. Just try to scoop you a little up there on them. Now I've got about a half a cup of Mountain Dew and you're just going to pour this sort of around the edges. And I have never used Diet Mountain Dew. I don't know if it matters or not but I've just always used regular, and these are gonna soak all this goodness up. It's kinda like those uh, viral TikTok cinnamon rolls. They're gonna get ooey gooey and soak it all up. Now my oven's at 350. I'm gonna put these in. I'm gonna start checking them about 30 minutes. Sometimes it takes up to 45. You just gotta look at them. These are so delicious. You can serve them just like this. You can put your little vanilla ice cream on them. You can also put peaches inside of that. We've done them so many different ways. These are amazing. They taste like you've spent all day baking up this tree. It's been a long time since I made these. I gotta dig in. And if you didn't guess, I'm more of a dumpling girl. The apples, that's just a bonus. Oh my goodness. That is so good. Mm. Another day recently, I asked my mama the same thing. I asked my mother-in-law, what is your favorite dessert? And she said, I like a good old German chocolate cake. I just knew she was going to say cherry yum yum because that one's real special to her. And I'm going to share that one also in this video. But she said she really liked just a plain old box German chocolate cake. And she began to tell me exactly, you know, how she did hers. And that's how I'm going to make this one tonight. And it's nothing hard. It's just a boxed cake mix and a couple cans of frosting. But I think that just plays into a lot of what moms are. I think this is my mom's favorite because a lot of the kids in the family don't like it because of the coconut. So she never makes it a whole lot, except if it's a big get together. And that's just how moms are, isn't it? I have been so blessed in my life to have a godly mother and then a godly mother-in-law that has been a wonderful example to me. They have been wonderful examples to my daughters, helped me with my kids, helped me with so many things over the years. And it is an honor and a pleasure to be able to do and help them as they get older. And both these women's lives have been such an encouragement to me. I look at them and I've learned so much. And at times I just thought, you know, they knew everything. I still think they know everything, but I know if I asked them, they would say they didn't have it all together. And they've been so supportive of our community and what we're doing here together on YouTube. And I just appreciate them so much for that. And you know, friends, there is a lot of stuff going around out there about the negativity of social media, about the ill effects that it has on women, especially in particular that it makes us feel less than, we feel like we're not good enough. And I do my best to make our community a place where we all belong. 
And I do show where I mess up. I mess up all the time. I mess up every day and I'm not perfect. Lord knows I'm not. And I hope that whenever you're here, that you leave feeling encouraged. I don't ever want this to be a place where you feel like anything is unattainable or you leave here feeling worse for having been here. I always want you to leave a little bit more encouraged. I hope I can put a little bit of a smile on your face or a giggle in your heart or your soul because I love to laugh and I love sharing recipes. This one ain't nothing but a cake mix and some canned frosting, <laughs> but you know, this is what my mom asked for. So this is what I'm making and this is perfectly okay. And I hope that you know it's okay and that you are enough. You don't have to be like anybody else. Be what God has called you to be. And I hope that you always leave my kitchen feeling a little bit happier and a little bit better than you did for having been here. The last thing I'm bringing you is a dessert tonight. It's a cherry yum yum. And we're going to start with the crust. You use three fourths a cup of sugar and you're going to pour into that three cups of graham cracker crumbs. You can buy these already crushed up in the can like I did. It was as cheap as a box of graham crackers. Then you're going to pour in a stick and a half of melted butter. You're just going to combine all that very well. I even use my hands after I start getting it all stirred up just to make sure I've got the butter moved all through the crumbs and the sugar. And then you're going to take about half of that graham cracker mixture put in the bottom of a 9 by 13 pan and you're going to pat it down and compact it real good to make your crust. Then you're going to move on to making your filling. Oh, and I always stick my crust in the freezer while I'm making the filling just so it can set up. To make your filling, you're going to beat one block of cream cheese. Then you're going to stir in about a cup of cold milk. And you're going to use a box of Dream Whip. And it's going to have two packages in it. And you're going to pour in both of those packages into this cream cheese and milk milk mixture and you're going to beat it for you know a good three to four minutes until it forms stiff peaks when you can pull your beaters up and see it you know it is good then you're going to take about half of that filling put it across your graham cracker crust spread it out as evenly as you can And you're going to need two cans of cherry pie filling. You could use one can of cherry, one can of blueberry. Do whatever you like, all blueberry. But my mom, I was making this for her birthday, and she loves cherry yum yum. So I used two cans of the very cherry pie filling. You're going to spread that evenly across your first layer of cream cheese mixture. Then you'll just come back across it with the rest of your cream cheese and Dream Whip mixture. For your topping, you're going to take the remaining graham cracker crumbs and just sprinkle it all over and fully coat the top of it with the crumbs. Then all you're going to do is stick a lid on that, put it in the refrigerator, and let it chill for at least two hours, but I like mine in there overnight. That way it sets up real good. Of course, I took this to Sunday dinner at Granny's house. It was for her birthday, and this was back in July of 2021 that I made this for her birthday. I think she might be due another one this July. 
This is one of her favorites, and this is one of those refrigerated type desserts that is so light and fluffy and cool and refreshing, and Granny just loves cherry flavor. It's her favorite. Watch this video next for some quick and easy dinner ideas, and don't forget to check that description box so you can see the other ladies' videos today, too. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers and mother figures out there. Friends, I appreciate you being here, and until next time, I send you lots and lots of love from my kitchen.